Well, I'm here with Graham Bristow, and he's one of the top guides in southern Ontario. We're fly fishing for brown trout, and he shows me a technique where I don't use indicators, and we do really well. Listen, stay with us. I know you're going to love this show and learn some great techniques. One of the misperceptions a lot of people have about small stream fishing is they think that the only place you're gonna find a big brown trout is gonna be at an elbow pool or somewhere where there's deep water. The reality is big trout will be wherever big trout wanna be. In other words, they're gonna need certain things. They're gonna need security, maybe a little overhanging bush, undercut bank, something to protect them and give them security. But at the same time, they'll be sitting in a foot of water, like behind me here, this bush, it's got shadow, it's got protection and they can dart out into the current quickly and grab something that's going by. So don't walk by a place like that or an undercut bank over there and think there's no fish. They can be in a foot of water. Nice fish. Uh, he's not super big. He's pretty good. You got your net? Yep. And it's funny, it, the fly hit. I gave it one twitch, one pull, and he's on. There he goes. Nice. Oh, oh, just got off. That wasn't that big. He's like 14, 14 inches. Yeah. I'd say 14 inches. Yeah. But that's what? A foot of water? Yeah. It's amazing where they'll sit in. Wow. It doesn't take much. And yeah, once you hit, as soon as it hits that water, something they just come out and hammer it. Yeah, oh, that's a beauty. Give them line, give them slack, give them slack. Oh, that's a tank. I'll get the net. All right. Make he sure you give him, give him some slack. I will. You got your uh, net there, Graham? Oh! That's Barbara's hook, so, isn't it, Graham? And you know what happened? He got down below me. But that fish moved probably two, three feet, came out, hit that fly. Yeah, I find with the barbless hooks, if you tighten up on, to, uh, on them too much and you don't let them pull drag, they'll shake loose. If you, if you let them sort of slowly pull, slowly pull, they're less likely to roll and spit that hook out. Okay, well, I'll do but that next time. That's all right, that was a beauty fish. All okay, right, let's get another one. That was awesome. One of the things a lot of people like to know about is the fact that with these streamers, uh, Graham, what you've got me doing is you've got a very short leader. This is what, five, six feet? Yeah, about six, I think. And very, very heavy tippet. What do you've got, 12 pound on here? Uh, yeah, 11 or 12 pound. Going to the fly and we're using an open loop knot so that we get lots of action with this fly. But the, the key and why you want me to use this tippet, as you said, is so we get a good hook set, one. Yep. But two, when we're fighting this fish, we can get them away from the timber. Yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot of wood, a lot of branches and stuff down. Uh, and that's, of course, where they want to go when they get hooked. So a little bit heavier of a leader, will uh, you'll be able to steer them out. You'll be able to control them a little bit better. So on the rivers up in, in my area, we've got a lot of really low, clear, uh, clean rivers. And it's very important um, to go quiet, be very stealthy with these fish. In fact, it's probably... Um, the number one recommendation or tip that I can give to an angler, angler on these rivers is to be quiet. Tiptoe into the river, uh, take five minutes to get into a spot and uh, is probably being, is better than uh, waiting an hour for them to settle down. Um, blending into the background is also important. Um, wearing green clothing, kind of like what I'm wearing, uh, drab clothing, stuff that sort of blends in, also important. 
And uh, even uh, kicking uh, mud in their face, walking up or, or da downriver from a pool and then walking up into the pool, if you're kicking mud into their face, oftentimes that'll actually shut them down. Uh, maybe not so much the little fish, but definitely the big guys. Uh, if you kick mud in their face, they pretty much know you're there and they can shut down. So it's important to be very stealthy on these rivers uh, because they're so clear. So there's times when you'll find a little pocket like this one here and there's really not a lot of room to strip it across the pool. It's just a tight little five foot stretch and it's right alongside a log. So what I do is what I call the dangle and that's basically just flip it up and keep your line tip high and then just sort of bounce the streamer along. Bounce, 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 bounce. If that doesn't work, move it down a couple feet, pop it in. Bounce, bounce, bounce. I'm really only focusing on a three foot stretch just outside or just off the edge of that, uh, that little log jab, uh, jam right there. Bounce, bounce, bounce. You could say twitch, 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 doesn't matter. But right in there, twitch. Just like that. Uh, this time of year, the brown trout, generally looking for a number of different things. I, I find uh, this area here, uh, lots of uh, mayflies, caddis, uh, stonefly nymphs. Uh, we generally try and determine what it is that they're feeding on, depending on the time of year, and use uh, nymphs that, you know, something similar to what they're actually feeding on. Uh, we also use streamers because they will hit small uh, sculpins, darters. Uh, small minnows, so we'll use streamers as well too. And uh, at times we'll use uh, dry flies. Uh, it just depends on the, the time of the day or um, uh, the week or whatever, it depends on what's coming off. Yeah, basically what I'm doing uh, this time of day, I know the fish are sort of holding deep. They're, they're not really chasing uh, high sun. Just conditions aren't good for uh, either dry fly or the streamer. So what we're doing uh, is, is this kind of like a, a tight line nymphing technique um, with a few sort of adjustments. Uh, instead of using an indicator where a lot of guys fish, uh, instead we're using this, what we call a cider, and it's just a high vis mono. Uh, sometimes I'll even use um, like a backing of sort, uh, like a fly line backing. And then from there, I'll run about uh, six, five to six feet down to either one or two split shots and sometimes I'll even use just a weighted fly, no split shots. And uh, basically what we're doing is we'll start at the back of the pool so we don't spook them. We don't want to get up to the head, we don't want to get right beside them because we can spook them. So we'll start at the back and we'll slowly work our way up but across and then up. So each cast we're, we're basically landing at one or two feet. Uh, uh, or, or up and then moving it over one or two feet and then we'll run a couple casts and then we'll move it over again one or two feet and then a couple casts and then so on and so on. So we're all the way across and then we'll move up again and we'll just keep repeat, repeating the process until hopefully we connect with the fish. Okay, could you demonstrate this for me? Sure, then? yeah. So I'm gonna try it. Let's hope we can get a fish. So with this method, we're just gonna flip it in. We're gonna we'll sort of land it there. I'm gonna remember where I landed in that spot. I'm gonna pull it through. Not fast, I'm not going to uh, drag it through. I just want to make sure that I've got some tension in my line. Next cast, I'm going to move it over about a foot. I'm going to pull her through. Keep that line tight. Too tight looks, uh, will move too fast. It looks unnatural to the fish. Too loose and I'll create slack and I won't be able to detect a strike. Each cast, I'm going to move it over a foot until I cover all the water effectively. Each time a little further, a little further, a little further. The whole time concentrating on that cider. I'm watching that cider to see any movement, any twitch, any pull, any straightening of the line, any stopping. And then I can quickly set the hook. Fish. In size? Uh, 14. Nice. Oh, he's decent. Yeah, nice brown. Get your net there. Yeah. You just unclip it from the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's holding down there, so he's a bigger fish. Biggest one of the day. Let's see if I can get him up. Bring his head up and I'll scoop him. Yeah, hard, hard lifting the rod here because I got trees over my head. 
Beautiful. Well done. It's a nice fish. Mm -hmm. Probably about 14 inches. Mm -hmm. That hook should just come right out. It's barbless. And I note that what he's done is he's wet his hands just to make sure he doesn't take the slime off. Yeah, always. Beautiful. That's wild a trout. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and they don't stock here, so this is completely wild yeah, here. Yeah, totally wild fish. This looks like a male, a little bit of a hook jaw. All right. We'll get him back in and, yeah. and off he goes. And the water's still nice and cool, so he'll go back, he'll be healthy, and we'll, we'll get him another what day. What was the water temperature when we checked it? Uh, we checked it today, it was 64 degrees. 64? And that was after a hot day, lots of sun and stuff. And you want to keep it 69 and below, you were telling me, right? Yeah, I find once it hits around that 69 degree mark, they just shut right down. And plus, I think it stresses them out. Once it gets in that 69, 70 degrees, it's probably not a good idea to be fishing for them in that. I do like that uh, 62 to 66 range, which mm -hmm. are sort of right in between. And even colder is fine too, but anything over 69, I just go somewhere else, find some colder water. See if you can lift that up a little bit. Okay. A little more. See how it's balancing, just sort of tap and bottom, tap and bottom. I think you're a little bit too low. Let me see the rod for a second. Show sure. you. So when you flip her out there, you want to flip her up just like you're doing. Mm -hmm. Hover that slider just above the bottom. See how it's balancing? As soon as you see a tap and bottom, lift it. So the goal basically is you want to lift that fly. You want that fly about six inches off the bottom. You don't want it dragging across the bottom. You'll snag more if you drag, and, and I think the fish see it less because it's down below them. So you want to lift it up. You want to get it eye level or just above eye level. Flip it out, put it in the water, get that slider up. As soon as they start tapping bottom, I'll lift it up a little bit higher just so I know I'm, I'm sort of hovering it or hanging it just in that uh, six inch off the bottom strike zone and run it through. If you're hitting too much bottom, lift it higher. So there's times when you're gonna find that uh, because there's about six feet below the, the bottom of that cider, if we're only fishing a two and a half foot depth and your cider's touching the, the, the water surface, you're way too deep. You're just dragging the whole way through. So because we know the distance, I know if it's only two and a half feet deep here and I lift my cider three feet off the, off the surface, I'm hanging just over the bottom the whole way through. And because of that, because I'm hanging it, it's tight. The second a fish touches it, it's gonna bounce down. And you know you've got a strike pretty much instantly and you'll catch more fish because of that. So try that. Okay. So just, just hang it, get it in the water. Yep, don't lift it too quick. Just sort of lift her up just a little bit. Good, good. The other thing you can do too is, I don't know if you notice, your shoulder might get a little sore. So what, I, what I'll do is, sometimes what I'll do is this. Instead of holding my arm out, because I know the guys will say, oh, my shoulder gets sore, you do this long enough holding your arm out, it gets, it gets sore. Instead, flip it out and just elevate your rod tip. All I'm doing is I'm keeping my hand low, I'm keeping my shoulder low, and all I'm doing is I'm tilting my, my, my wrist up, and that elevates my rod tip. And I can do the exact same thing. I'll reach it first, and then I'll lift I'll elevate the rod tip and I'll relax my shoulder. So I'm still fishing, mm -hmm. tips up. I'm not, I'm not uh, tiring out my, my shoulder or, or anything. And all I'm doing is I'm just tilting the rod tip up just like this. Flip it up, tilt the tip up. I don't want to tilt too much because I don't want to pull it out of there. I still want it to flow in a nice straight line. Drift it all the way down. There you go, try that. That way you won't tire yourself out at the end of the day or before the end of the day. Like that? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I don't think he's a huge one, but... Oh, right. Maybe not, he's got some. You get your net there. This uh, sulfur, these mayflies, these sulfurs that are everywhere, we're getting them excited. Up a good fight. Nice Not wild huge, brown. But... Beauty. There we go. Beautiful. Nice Let's fish. bring them over here in the light. So I think we're going to start seeing a lot more fish. What my hand here. Okay, you want to lower the net yep. carefully. Look at that. Beautiful colors. That is nice. 
So what's that one, about 12 to 14 inches? Yeah, probably 13, yeah. Yeah, yeah right in that ballpark. I'm just gonna put them in here. There it goes. Well done. Thank you, sir. This is so exciting, and what, you, I don't know if the camera can see it, but there's mayflies everywhere. It just started, and it's all about timing, right? Yeah. And you gotta be there for the opportunities when they happen, and we've been seeing the sulfurs, but now they're starting to move, and so are the fish. Yep, they're getting active. And I just saw another one rise down there, too. Let's get another one. That's right in that same spot where there was one rising right over there. Okay. Not sure how big he is. Oh yeah, good fish. Beautiful colors. Yeah, this looks like a female. This one. Oh, yeah. Got him. Nice. nice. There we go. See the colors? That one's chunky, eh? Yeah, nice and thick. Feeding well. Beautiful. And yet you'd never know they were here before. They had locked jaw. Yep. So, um, Earlier you would have thought there was no fish in there. You tickle his belly here. They usually get some going. There he goes. Wow. Well done. Goes to show you, persistence counts. And, and we just waited it out, kept fishing, stuck to the techniques, modified it a few times, tried streamers, did dries, did a whole bunch of different nymph um, changes that you made. And going small was a big factor here, wasn't it? Yeah. Going think, really small. I think that was uh, your recommendation, actually, was uh, try something smaller and see if they'll take it since they weren't taking the bigger stuff. And, uh, yeah, worked out pretty good so far. All right, let's get a 20-incher. Exactly. All right, so what happened was, Graham just had me working his nymphing rig. We've got a fish on here. I've been holding him for a second. And uh, I wanted Graham to come up and help me. And this fish, I just missed one before. And this guy came up. Oh, it's a big fish, too. Look at him. Oh, it's a big fish. Now, what have we got, 5X or 6X on That's here? That's 5X, yeah. Uh, OK, this is a really big fish. Oh, oh yeah, that's a nice fish. It's a really nice fish. This is a five weight rod and reel, eight and a half foot. Well, I knew as soon as I struck, I could feel the weight and then the head shakes. And what I did was I just backed off a bit, kept the tension and let it just sit there in the current. He was right on the inside edge of the current over here, just where the bubble line is. There he is down, way down river. Oh, I think he's got wrapped a bit. Okay, I'm gonna bring him towards shore. Bring him towards shore. This is why you come here. And you want to go out with Graham for big wild brown trout. Okay, lift there he him, is. Lift him, lift him, lift him, lift him. Yeah. I'm trying to hold him up as high as I can. I keep, I'm going to get him back in the mud so he gets confused. That's a beautiful fish. See if you can reel in a little more. Lift yeah, him up. I can't. It's at the top. Got him. I'll lift him up. Oh, yeah. Yes. Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Way to go. That oh. is a beauty, Colin. Look at that giant. That's over 20. <sighs> we that's, worked so hard, Graham, haven't we? We've got some 20s in here in the last two weeks, and I think that might be the biggest one so far. Look at that Look fish. At, Look at that big alpha predator in this system. But this is a true wild trout um, because they're not, not stocked here. And this, oh, I can't even tell you how exciting this is to catch something like this, and we missed them. Over the last two days, and Graham, you know, your instruction's been fantastic. Graham, so we just quickly measured him. He's 20 inches. Look at that beautiful brown trout. Is that incredible? Okay, just carefully put him down here. Rest for a second. He'll tell me when he's ready to go. Well, he's already shown he's ready to go. Yeah, give him a little tickle, a little awesome. tickle. Oh, and there he swims off. Graham. Thank you, sir. Well done. 
You taught me everything I needed to know to catch that fish. And I gotta tell you, if you wanna go out and have a great trip and you wanna catch wild brown trout and trout throughout Southern Ontario, Graham's a great guy to go out with. And thanks Graham for teaching me about the nymphing techniques, the streamer techniques, and all the things we talked about in the show. If you wanna learn more about this show, go to our website, newflyfisher.com, or you can also look in the website and find more information about Graham. Thanks for joining us, see you next week. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the new Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up.